Today I'm framing out a 2x6 exterior wall on the A-frame. This is on the second floor. If you're just joining us, we're building this A-frame cabin up in the Ozarks. I didn't want to bore you with a bunch of footage of me sawing 2x6s. But I do want to say something about saws. If you watch the video I put up about flooring on the first floor, I was showering praise over this uh, Milwaukee circular saw. Well, since then, actually just the other day, I was, uh, I was ripping a 2x4 and the, the trigger melted. Um, so the whole saw just, I don't know, it, it melted, it doesn't work anymore. Um, thankfully, you know, these triggers are apparently little modules, so I can get it replaced. It's under warranty, but it's like a two-week turnaround, so uh, I just ordered a new little trigger online. Um, and so while I wait for that, I bought a handsaw. I've had a handsaw, whatever, but it's been a really crappy one, and I was like, well, if I'm going to have to handsaw a bunch of stuff, I should buy a new handsaw. And so I went to my local lumberyard and I bought this Mitcraft handsaw, and it is terrible. This is the, wor the worst saw I've used in my life. It was so bad that I thought I'm not going to be able to get any work done until I get the circular saw fixed. Well, I looked it up, and apparently there's a huge difference between different hand saws. And so I, I went off and I looked up, you know, what length saw is good for me. Um, roughly what should I look for and I, I bought this uh, Irwin handsaw and it cuts through stuff like butter and so this is just a quick I guess little piece of information for anybody else um, paying an, an extra five bucks for a high-end handsaw is really useful and it's supposed to be roughly the length of your closed fist so that you can you get your whole kind of strike length so now you know roughly what length saw you should have and that you should buy a nice sharp one. Okay, so that's the rough framing. I feel like I should probably start using the nail gun for that. Uh, so I'm going to pop these uh, OSB sheets on there. I do want to say uh, one thing, which is that I am caulking all of the OSB around the perimeter of it uh, with, with kind of the mindset that I want the whole thing to be airproof, uh, as, as tight as it can be. And the reason for that is that we want this house to be solar powered and you know one of the biggest draws electricity wise, of course, is heating and cooling. And uh, you know, when you think about building a tight house or building an uh, energy efficient house, people think about, oh, we're going you know, to have a two yards of insulation in the attic, and that's, that's really great. But especially with old construction, one of your biggest uh, energy losses is going to be through air change. So it's kind of hard, hard to find specific numbers on how uh, air tightness versus insulation stacks up. But you can actually kind of run the numbers yourself. I'll leave them some uh, some uh, links below. But the basic idea is this: you you've got a bunch of air inside the building, and it's you know hotter in the winter or cooler in the summer than the air outside. So if that air inside leaves the building, then you're going to get air from the outside to replace it, and basically the energy that's in that air uh, is lost, and you have to run your HVAC system to to now. Uh, raise or lower the temperature of the new air that came in to replace it. So the question is, how much air leaves the building for you know a given hole? Uh, or rather, you know, a good friend of mine pointed this out. It's like if, if you add up all the little cracks and crevices and holes in your building, you know, they all maybe make up a, a really big hole altogether, and that big hole is where you're losing, uh, you know, that equivalent hole is, is where you're losing a bunch of uh, energy. How much energy? Well, it depends, which is why it's hard to find numbers on it. You, you can really easily calculate how much energy is in the air. Uh, the thing that, that matters is how much air will you be losing. And so if you imagine a, a, a one-inch one drilled hole, if, if the pressure inside the building is the exact same as the pressure outside the building, so air doesn't want to move either direction because it's all equalized, 
then you're not going to lose any uh, energy whatsoever because no air is going to be going through the hole. Okay, so the variables that matter then is basically uh, how big a hole you got, what's the temperature difference, you know, how, how much hotter or cooler is it inside than outside, and uh, what's the pressure difference, so how, how, how high is the pressure to push air through the hole. And the pressure difference is really hard to calculate because it totally depends. If it's super windy outside, then you're going to have a big pressure difference. Uh, if the temperature is roughly the same and uh, you know it's a cool day, whatever you got uh, a, a well-designed HVAC system, it's going to be pretty balanced. Um, so one one way to to kind of estimate it at least is to to look at okay, well let's say that it's just a, a regular still day, but there's a, there's a temperature difference. So like outside, let's say it's 36 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's right around freezing, and you keep it say 72 degrees inside. Um, what happens then, of course, is that you get this stacking effect where the hot air inside the building is rising, right, and the cool air that's, uh, is, is, is sinking down below it, and you get this kind of uh, convection oven inside the whole building. And, and basically that leads to uh, higher up in the building, like up here on the second floor, you're going to have a higher pressure than you would uh, the bottom floor, and you can calculate that pressure. So for this specific building, which is about 20 feet high, uh, if it's 36 outside and 72 inside, then the pressure difference from that is roughly 0 0.075 psi. So really low, comparatively. You can then say, okay, well, so I have this one inch hole, and uh, I've got this pressure that I know, and so I can calculate how much air I'll be losing per hour, and then I can calculate how much energy is in that air, and I'm not going to bore you with all the details, I'll leave some links, I guess I already have, I'm sorry. Really, really briefly, what ends up happening is if you have a one inch hole in the middle of winter, you can estimate that you lose about half a British thermal unit per hour. So one half BTU, it's actually like 0.6 or whatever, but so, so that's for a one inch hole. So now you know. So because of this, uh, I'm trying to, to build it really tight and so I'm using straight silicone uh, all the way around the edges and this is just one of many parts in and, and trying to make the building uh, tight. So this is all nailed in with these little eight penny nails. Uh, the nailing schedule is uh, six inches on center around and then uh, a foot apart on the, uh, in the inside. Nailing schedules are kind of interesting because they're different from a lot of other stuff in construction, like so much stuff in construction is minimums, like the minimum thickness of sheathing is whatever, the minimum spacing is this, the min you know, it's all minimums. You could like double all that, you know, a lot of times over and make it stronger and more expensive. But nailing schedules are not minimums, they're like specifically, because if you do more nails than what's called for, uh, each nail that you, you hit through board is, is going to weaken it, you know, it's going to split the fibers a little bit, and so if you go beyond the nailing schedule, uh, you kind of get yourself into dangerous territory because you may be uh, weakening the structural uh, soundness of, of the board. So uh, you should look up the nailing schedules and you should follow them. Alright, as you can tell, I was about to say it's getting dark, but it's been dark since I started filming this, so it's getting darker, it's getting pretty late, so I'm going to go hit the sack. Um, subscribe if you guys are interested in this stuff, uh, you get updates, and I'll see you guys next time.